Hello, I'm Josh Topper of Topper Machine. Many of you know me from my machine shop content, but I also do a lot of outside contract work as well. Uh, one thing I really enjoy doing and, and I'm pretty good at is, is crane operation. So behind me is the Duluth Misabi and Iron Range X7. It is a 1941-ish, um, I believe is the year 41-42, industrial brown hoist, 250-ton railroad wrecking crane. Um, this crane was in active service on the Misabi until 2001 when it was sold to the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad, which is the railroad close by to me that I do a lot of work for. Um, over the years, this crane has seen a lot of use. There have been two really good operators on it and one total moron. Um, he's no longer involved and the first really good operator, he's passed away. So now I am the sole operator of this crane and uh, it is my responsibility to take care of it. Um, we had some vandalism recently, uh, broke out all, all the windows. I'm gonna have to take care of that here this once the weather turns for us, but we have a big lift coming up next week. We're lifting a passenger rail car. Um, it's gonna be a tandem lift with a Kershaw railroad wrecking crane, highway, high rail, what goes on the rail and the highway, and the X7. So. Let's climb on board. I'll give you the tour of the engine room and the controls and the, the crane in itself. This is an amazing piece of equipment and I hope you enjoy. Well, this will probably be a little difficult to see just because of the lighting not being the best, but this is the operator control area. This is pretty much where I stand and all the magic happens. And in order to actually operate this correctly, you have to open the door here, drop this platform out so you got something to stand on, and this chain is something you lean on, which I guess I need to repair that too now. That was original to the crane um, when it came from the Misabi, so it's, it's seen some years. Yeah, very, very tight quarters in here. This is a 100% a dog drive crane um, up here in the, in the gearing. You've seen the main cable drum here with the cable. And so this crane was originally built as steam and it's, it's pretty much all original as it was except for the addition of the Scummins engine, the twin disc torque converter, and then the link belt um, clutch and drive system to drive everything. So originally the steam engine would have been sitting over here to operate all of the, the drums and the dogs and everything. Now the X7 is a um, self-propelled crane as well. You have to put it into gear, but it, uh, it is a quite a job to put it into gear and you really don't use it much unless you're at a job site working. So here I'm in the back of the engine room. Um, it's very dark in here. The lighting is not good. Um, we got our fuel tank over here, spare parts, belts, cords um, for the heaters, um, the engine, air compressor, and the alternator which is a dual voltage system runs 30 volt DC and 100, 120 volt AC and the AC is used on the boom lighting and the deck lighting and then 30 volt is for car body lights um, engine control all that um, which there isn't much on here but a really cool thing about this crane is this this is a little fuel oil boiler that they set up for a block heater and I'm gonna go ahead and get this lit up so we can start getting some heat into the motor. We're about 34 degrees right now outside, so I wanna get this warmed up before we even start it. Alright, so she's lit. She's not quite up and running yet. It needs a little more fuel on the wick, but it's starting to. I'm going to go ahead and close her up and uh, we'll let this thing start warming the engine up. 
It's a pretty simple, simple unit. It just heats the water and it's all convection. Uh, we do have a 120 volt, uh, that's like a 3000 watt block heater right there. We have a crankcase heater and a torque converter heater also on this crane. So this thing was set up to be on shore power at all times and uh, ready to go to work at a moment's notice. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll climb out of the crane here and I'll, I'll take you around and show you the hook and the rest of it. All right, so we'll go back out to the hook here. I've been having nothing but problems with my GoPro here. It's been locking up on me, so I'm hoping we're getting everything. Um, if you're looking at getting into doing these YouTube videos and looking for a camera, avoid the GoPros. They are absolute trash. So we'll, I'm gonna climb up here just behind the boom and show you the inner workings of the So this cylinder here controls the swing. It goes back to those dogs and clutches there. Um, drops down and drives everything below. Here's a close-up of a drive dog. Um, let's see, can't remember. This is high and low speed for the slew control. Um, this cable up here is our main boom hoist. Um, and then main line and, and uh, or this is the main hook, the big hook, and then the small hook is the cable drum behind it. So quite a bit in here. And I apologize for the shakiness and like I said, I hope this camera's still working. <laughs> the crane itself is a 250 ton and right here is my load chart. Tells me what I'm capable of. There's a little pointer down there on the boom. And then that lines up with feet and tonnage. So like I have 35 feet here. I'm between 52 and 60 ton. Um, 30 feet, I'm 60 ton. 25 feet, I'm 60 ton. That's on the, the small hook, the auxiliary line. On the big hook at 16 foot off center, I'm 250 ton. 17 foot six, 225 and on down so 80 ton at 34 foot reach and 48 ton on the little hook at 45 foot so it's quite a bit of capacity on this thing and for me to see that i have to look through this little bitty window right right here so when i'm running the crane now we'll climb down on the flat car and give you a good view of the hook all right, so when I talk about big hook and little hook, this is the big hook. And I know it's hard to tell how big it is, but I'll just put my hand on it. That's pretty big. It is a five-part line. And, I mean, just the size of these nuts here, I mean, gives you an idea how big this thing really is. And then this is the little hook, which is still very large. That's a single part line, or two part actually. So that is what we do all of the lifting with is these two hooks and then here's a spreader bar and there's a spreader bar which we'll be digging out for this lift. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, uh, get the crew together and we'll start getting this thing set up and hopefully, uh, hopefully get to work here on the setup and, and show this thing in operation a little bit. Well, we got a little bit of heat in her at 100 degrees water temp. Let's go ahead and start her up and, and uh, start the rigging.
step is to do all the rigging, and I'm not going to film that because that's a lengthy process, but uh, when uh, the time comes for lifting, we'll, we'll film a little of that. Well, our truck is here this morning, 7.30. Um, we just got some crappy weather, and it sounds like we got more crappy weather coming, but I'm just getting here to get the big hook started for the morning and warmed up, and then we'll uh, get the uh, trucks unloaded from the, from the semi. My truck's here, I got enough air to start working. I'm gonna get this thing picked up and swung around and start getting ready to do the lift. The guys are putting straps on the four corners of the truck. The first truck, we're going to pick that up, swing it over, lower it down next to the trailer, and then knock all the dirt and stuff out of the wheels before we spin it around and put it on the rail.
another down. Ah! <sighs>
Let me get lower to the ground. came out good I'm doing all the filming by myself uh, we're gonna get the rigging done for the for the car body when it gets here that'll be the next lift so the video will continue but uh, we're gonna get the rigging done and be uh, ready to go when the semi gets here well we're done for right now until the uh, next truck gets here and uh, They'll call me when it arrives and I'll come in, we'll rig it, um, crane on each end and pick the car body up, set it on the trucks. So, and then I'll give you a quick tour of the car we're doing. Um, pretty, pretty unique piece of equipment coming. So, stay tuned.
So now I suppose you guys all want to see what this car looks like because I haven't seen it myself. This is a Great Northern Ranch car. It was a bar, basically a bar, tavern lounge. Actually a beautiful car. A little bit of damage from going down the highway, but not too bad. Rather a unique piece. The car number is 1244, and we trucked it up from Indiana. It was part of a restaurant down there. So, pretty cool. Figure out how to get behind the bar and show you the kitchen. There we go. Maybe. And here's the kitchen. All stainless steel. I think it's missing the original stove, which may have been coal fired right in here, but pretty cool car. Pretty cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video of the big hook in operation and uh, you know, checking out this car. This car will be put back into service. Um, some, some work to do, but not a lot. It's in really good shape. Um, be, a, be an interesting piece here in the future to see it all done and back in, in operational service on the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad in Trigo, Wisconsin. So with that, we'll end here. We'll probably get back to the machine shop content next week. So until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.